Hi, Rock Buds Papa. Hope you guys are doing great. Today we're going to talk about the very iron-rich Red Mountain Formation and how it made Birmingham, Alabama and vicinity great. We're going to learn about where you find the Red Mountain Formation and how it made Birmingham and other areas where it's located uh, excellent, outstanding, iron-producing communities and we're going to look in the prehistory of ancient times and find out how the Red Mountain Formation forms. So stay tuned and if you like this video please subscribe it helps me immensely. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. So here we go. This is a geologic map of Alabama and the red arrow points approximately to where Birmingham, Alabama is and the Red Mountain Formation. The Red Mountain Formation is located in the western part of the Valley and Ridge Geologic Province and it extends from Alabama all the way up into the state of New York. The Cumberland Plateau Escarpment rises up just to the west of where the Red Mountain Formation resides. Here's a picture of Birmingham, Alabama and the Red Mountain Highway, which shows a huge road cut where the Red Mountain Formation is exposed. This Red Mountain Formation, which is abundant all around Birmingham and vicinity and is chock full of iron, made Birmingham, Alabama the iron producing center in the South for many, many years. Today, we're gonna visit the Tanny Hill Iron Foundry State Park, which is located just a few miles south of Birmingham, Alabama, and see how what iron making was like in the old days. So here we go. It's a beautiful day, even if it is a little cloudy. The autumn color colors are fabulous here at Tanny Hill Iron Works. Looks like most of the houses that were built for the workers are still here. Okay, me and Grammy are at the Tanny Hill Iron Works State Park in southwest of Birmingham, Alabama. And there's the old iron furnace. Okay, so there's the iron furnace. It's humongous. Let's just go up close to it and see what's in there. This, all this was started in the early 1800s. I obviously it wasn't this elaborate in the beginning, but uh, it's an ideal spot because there's Red Mountain, Iron Ridge Red Mountain Formation, and there's the uh, Cambrian and Ordovician maybe even Mississippian limestone, and then there's coal just on the Cumberland Plateau, which is just west of here. This pipe, it probably is the pipe that blew air into the furnace. In the early days, the air was pumped in by a gigantic bellows that was operated from a water wheel that was powered by the stream. Later on, they had a steam engine that pumped the air in. Some more of the furnace stuff. That's probably where they dumped in the uh, Red Mountain iron ore and the coal or coke and the limestone. This is some of the furnace structure on the inside. They have the furnace openings bricked up for safety, I guess. And this is Red Mountain stuff right here. Let's take a close-up look. You see that? This is the um, old quarry where they dug out stone, uh, which I imagine they used the stone to build the furnaces and also to get the iron that powered the furnaces. some of the rocks here. This 
yellow stuff is likely to be limonite rich. Shale sandstone. Limonite's a, a yellowish version of iron. That's kind of cool looking there. Water is one of the requirements for making iron, along with the iron ore, limestone, and coal. Then it flows into this gorgeous river. Isn't that lovely? This is a witch hazel tree, or shrub, I guess, that blooms this time of year. And why do they call it witch hazel? It really, witch is really weich, not the broom toter. Weich means a flexible stick and they would use these flexible sticks to find water. That's where the term water witch came from, except it's not a water witch carrying a broom, it's water weich. People who found a good place to dig a well. Here we got pieces of the reddish iron ore, red mountain stuff, and black hunks of coal. The coal was made into coke, the same way wood is made into charcoal, by um, heating it up in an oxygen poor fire, and that puts more BTUs per pound into it, makes the coal into coke, which is useful for melting iron. This is limestone. These gray rocks are limestone rocks and there uh, are limestone formations very close to here. The rock types run in stripes which is always the case because of the crashing of continents pushing them all the rocks from uh, southeast to northwest and that form rock stripes that go from northeast to southwest and the Limestone was used to to uh, take the impurities out of the iron. And when the uh, after everything was said and done, there would be this bluish glass slag uh, that was formed by the limestone and the impurities. Here is a photo gallery of the very iron-rich Red Mountain hematite formation for your viewing enjoyment. So as a quick review, in order to make iron, you need iron ore, and that came from the Red Mountain Formation. You needed coke, which came from burning coal in a low oxygen environment, and you needed limestone to take out the impurities. Also in the early days, water uh, to turn a water wheel that operated air bellows. So from the very top of the furnace, which could be 30 feet high, they'd load in layers of iron ore, coke, and limestone over and over and over again. Then they'd go down to the bottom and make a fire in the bottom and turn the bellows on that pumped air into it. And after a while, it got so hot that it melted the iron out of the ore. The limestone sucked out all the impurities and fairly pure iron would come out at the bottom. The Iron Mountain Formation was laid down during the Silurian period from about 450 million years ago to 400 million years ago. But the whole story began about 500 million years ago during the Tachonic Orogeny. During the Tachonic Orogeny, the Tachonic Island Arc Chain formed. It ran from Alabama up through New York and beyond. In this picture, it's represented by the volcano on the right. You can see this tachonic volcanic island arc pushing down 
on the land crust of North America, forming a shallow sea that's called a foreland basin. This is a good bird's eye view of what the Taconic foreland basin look like. First, limestone formed in the basin, and then as the Taconic mountains eroded, especially from Virginia north, the basin was filled with mud, silt, and then sand. By Silurian time, the Taconic Mountains had eroded down to their iron-rich roots, and that material began to erode into the Foreland Basin on top of the sand. On its way down into the Foreland Basin, all this iron-rich, mostly mud and some sand, uh, was oxidized because by that time, North America was in the southern trade wind belt, which is hot and dry. And that's why the Red Mountain Formation is red. Thanks for watching, Rock Buds, and thanks for subscribing. This is Papa saying, have a great day, all you great people, and happy rock hunting. Papa out.